Boys, time for some dumb football questions Do it. here. Every single week, we dive into the YouTube comment section, and we take your dumb football questions. We stockpile them, and we get to as many of them as we can. We also, I think this is going to be a new trend here on the dumb football question segment. We're going to read from the Apple and Spotify review sections where you guys can give us a five-star rating and a positive review and let us know in those sections who your favorite obscure offensive linemen are of all time. Mm. This is from Biggie, who on March 27th gives us a five-star. Thank you, Biggie. Thank you, Biggie. Biggie. Says, awesome show. Great show, guys. My submission for random offensive linemen I liked was was Gray Rugamer. Gray? Or is it Gary? Did he spell it wrong? Hey, don't, Gray don't, don't, be, don't be getting a biggie like that. Biggie knows Come what he's on. doing. Gray Rugamer, Green Bay Packer, 47 like years old, 300 pounds, born in 1976, oh, Las a, Vegas, Nevada. What a stallion, dude. Mm. Oh, man, this dude had some hair back in the day, too. I think okay. he's, now, he's now named a club's director of player engagement in 2017. Also, he, yeah, he worked as an executive for the Packers. Okay. He might, he might be an exec. Look at this guy. What a stat. Miami Dolphins, 1999. Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, Patriots, 2000 to 2002. Ooh. Dude's got a Bowl? ring. Green Bay Packers, 03 to 05. Giants. So, okay, that's pretty obscure. Um, and then uh, from Slim2321, his favorite obscure offensive lineman is Notre Dame and the Vikings' own John Sullivan. Ooh. Do you guys have any John? Do you guys ever? You ever cross paths with John? He, dude, he chirped me Ferrari on Twitter fine. like six months he, ago. Ferrari he was fine. The number one. He was the reason the big baller in the Ferrari fine was created in the O line room. When he showed he up a, that day, he had a four door hatchback Ferrari. The California. It was called the Ferrari California. And, and so he showed up, he and I was it, like, "That's a ding. That's the any, biggest thing." Tony was like, <laughs> "What is that?" And I was like, that's a ding, Tony. That's a yep. ding. Vroom, 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 vroom. I was like, no <laughs> way. Dude, you know, like, it was hilarious because at the time, like, it was Khalil and myself, and we had the big trucks. Jay, you had a truck. Yeah. Like, everybody had a truck on the O line. And all of a sudden, you hear, vroom, 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 vroom. and I was like, <laughs> Tony's like, what is that? Yep. <laughs> ding. <laughs> and we told him, every day you drive it in, you're getting ding, dude. And he was like, he was super pissed about that. He was a vet at the time, right? He would have been. Yeah. Is he older yeah, than you guys? He was coming off a broken Soli and back. and I were probably the same age. That's right. Yeah. He yeah. Had a, I think he had a broken back in 15. Uh, I will say this. Sully was one of the smartest guys so I ever played smart. with. Like you, so smart. He was, he was to the point to where you were like, okay, I get it. You're smart. You understand everything and you get everything. Like, you're smart. Got it. But then he would drive his Ferrari in and I'd be like, dang, that's a fine. But Wait, also, what, so what, you, if you don't drive a truck, you get uh, you get no, a ding you and a fine. You can't drive a Ferrari, Again, dude. The definition of big baller is flexing that you have money, right? Okay. That's and so if you drive a Ferrari four door hatchback, you're flexing like, yeah, I got cash. And then he'd come in with his Louis Vuitton bag or whatever it was. We just ding. He also lived. I've in never Greenwich, understood the Louis Vuitton bag thing. Not for him, I mean for anyone. <laughs> No, I don't. You know, I've, a, I mean, I've a, never understand the like luggage thing in general. Like, yeah, what are we carrying bags around for? That was like what was it two years ago? Where John? Well, no, Taylor in football you have a jo bag. Like everyone has a backpack because you yeah. have your playbook. So, and your so iPad. he has a. It's like his backpack. It's not like yeah. a man purse. No, he had like it was the functional. big duffel. He had like the big duffel. But like that was like Jonathan Taylor got all his old linemen for Christmas a few years ago, like that big duffel Louis Vuitton, and everyone was like, "Oh." Thank you. Thanks, man. Like it was like this. Oh, an avocado. Sure, Rolex, Thanks, <laughs> right? Like I was just like nobody Thanks. knows what to do with it. Yeah, it's <sighs> like I don't. I'm gonna give this to my wife, I guess. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Uh, Matthews seven three three five chimes in YouTube comment section. What is the most dumb rookie thing you've ever seen a rookie do on like the first day of camp or close to it? Hmm. Mm. You want you want to talk about the hill or no? Let's not talk about the hill. <laughs> oh <Okay>. wow! <laughs> Let's not do the hill. Um, do the hill. Don't name names, but do the hill. Don't name names, but do the hill. Okay. <laughs> when I was in Minnesota with Jeremiah, we had a rookie who, during practice, defecated <laughs> on the hill at practice and what? left it there. 
and wiped with the Gatorade towel and left it. And so we didn't find out till way later. EQ was very not happy. Yeah, the equipment people. Dennis Ryan was one of the greatest guys I was ever around in the NFL. Like, just the nicest guy. And when he came to me and told me, and he was like, somebody better make this right, I was like, understood. Understood. Wait, yeah. wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Was it like in an, an emergency? You remember the field? IBS situation? Remember the field? Situation? Remember, you remember, the, you remember oh, the field? Winter Park? Do you remember the yeah. hill yeah. that has the trees? Hill yeah. going yeah. Up they went side. behind a tree. The instead Adrian of Peterson going hill. inside. Yes. Instead of going inside, they went to the hill. Nobody knows why. It got cleaned up by EQ, and they were they were fucking pissed. Let's just put Wait, it was that he, way. Was he just just to, to describe this for the audience? We're unsure. This is the we're old not Viking, sure, dude. This is the, the old Vikings practice facility. You guys had like yep. three the grass outdoor side. fields. Yep. There's there's like trees and a fence kind of lining. It so was you like can't this. Just walk you, up. And, you would go down there, and there was a turf turf field, and there was two grass fields, and next to the grass field was a massive hill because it was kind of sunk yeah. in, so nobody could see what we were doing, and like there was a big fence around it, and it was completely lined, so nobody Did could ever look in. Did he climb the hill and just no, drop like he, trowel? Yeah, yeah he, he just like up walked hill, up, dropped trowel, th- squatted, and shit. Not even kidding you. Not even kidding you. It was, a real, they, it was a real story. They were pissed. And they were like, this is the most unbelievable thing in the world. Like, Tony couldn't believe it. Tony called me in and was like, are you for real with this? I was like, dude, I don't know. I don't know what to do, Tony. <laughs> like, and by the like, way, again, it's and for, for the layout. You're close enough to been, the bathroom. Quicker to go into the building, yes. right? And yes, because there was on the other side was a double door that you could just walk right through, and to the left was a bathroom. Because <laughs> you used to take your drug test there, remember, Jay? Yep. You'd walk in, and the drug tester would grab you and be like, come with me real quick. You'd be like, okay, cool, got it. You, it was almost faster to go that way, but instead he went the other way. I will be honest with you. Same rookie. Lost his playbook in the preseason. <laughs> the preseason. Not even kidding you. We've in, oh, we've talked about this player two. before. <laughs> yeah, you think gave it away, you dumbass. <laughs> no, wow, well, it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> For the diehards, you, yeah, the diehards. If you, you want to do, I mean, and obviously Alex was there only two years, so you could do some research if you really wanted to. <laughs> I mean, we both know the story. Clearly, we were here. What 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 level find is that? What oh, bin does huge. that fall under for the ding? That might have been SFR, the same as the iPad. New category. It was the SFR. It was the SFR, which is stupid fucking rookie. And then the team fined him, I think, like ten grand. For the playbook. <laughs> That's an expensive crap. No, for the playbook. <laughs> for no, the for the playbook. playbook. I'm oh, the playbook's playbook. a big okay. fine. I don't remember That's what condom. we fined him. It was a lot. It was a lot. But I, I don't remember the exact amount we fined him because it was a special, wow, like it was a specialty, specialty yeah. allocation. But the, the playbook was the one that set him off. Like, that was, dude, that's a huge no-no. And especially as a rookie, they tell you, like, the one thing you can never do is lose your playbook. You can never lo- And it was when we were in a away game. And we, they were like, there's no way this is happening. And he was, don't have it. They were like, why didn't you tell us when we were there? And he was like, I didn't know. And they were like, how do yeah, you not know, where, you, they're you like, how do you not know where your back. playbook is? And he was like, I didn't realize until we got home. And they were like, this is insane. There are a lot of things that happen. So did okay. One more thing on this. Did did so? Did an equipment guy have to go up with like a dog poop bag or like a shovel? Like what what level of cleanup are we talking about here? Unsure. We're unsure. But if you not, can imagine a shit, it was probably on not the good. Side of a hill, and then being like, oh, I left a t- I left a towel up here. I must have blown away from practice. Must have pick yeah. up said towel. Oh. Feces. Anyways. Okay, Leto yeah. P chimes in, says, "You guys hit on Andrew Luck's injury history Wait, a week or get, two ago." I don't get a dumb. I don't get a dumb rookie. I don't get a dumb rookie. One. Oh, by all means. So it's not as bad as that. But I was in San Diego my rookie year, and it's we we're sitting there, and all those rookies had to go around the room and say, "You know, I'm Jeremiah. I went to Nebraska, whatever." And we had this linebacker. I don't remember his name. He was an undrafted free agent. And he stands up and he goes, my name's so-and-so. I'm from the Ohio State University National Champions. And I'll never forget King Dunlap had a, a Gatorade, like little Gatorade thing full of seeds that he'd been spitting in. And he, he's, again, eight-year vet, dude, been in the league forever. And he stands up, throws it at him in the middle of the two and goes, no one gave a fuck where you came from and sat back down and everyone just started dying (laughs) right like and like that was my first moment like this dude was so excited to be able to say like where he was from like i'm a buckeye and like no one cared everyone and so everyone the rest of the year just called him buckeye and i he got cut in camp i was like hey buckeye get over here 
Right, but like who was the, it? The, the vigor. I can't remember. It was a linebacker. No, dude. you got to find out who was that. Oh, gosh, I'll I'll figure it out. But like, was, what, team? Way, what, what year? Team? What year? What year? It, it was the Chargers in 2014. He was an undrafted free agent rookie. It maybe had been 15. I can't remember if it was 14 or 15 because I was there for two camps. But like, just the vigor and the like the he's the stand up that he said it with was just so like. The Ohio State University national, <laughs> like the dude just chucked the biggest seeds out of it. it. Was incredible. 2014 Ohio State. So this, it was either the 13 Ohio State team or the 14. It would have been team, the 13 right? Ohio State seed or the 14. Let me, let me see here. Let me go. Uh, Joshua Perry. That sounds right. He played for the 2014 national championship. No, Ohio State. Yeah, there's team. a good chance that was him. Yep. Uh, might have been Joshua. Perry. If I, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, if it's not Joshua Perry, sorry to Joshua Perry uh, for dragging you, <laughs> right? In this segment, that's hilarious. Yeah, he was a uh, fourth round pick. Was he fourth round pick? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. we'll Could keep be. looking that up. Could be. We'll, we'll do more. But it, yeah, that was my favorite rookie story. That was like the very quick way for me to realize that uh, <laughs> no one cares. No one gave a shit where you come from anymore. He you was so in, excited. He was yeah. so excited, dude. He was so pumped. I won a national championship. Yeah. The hey, everybody. Ohio State, State University. Oh, Shut God. up. Yeah. <laughs> Eat some seed gel. you seed. Clown. Yeah, it, like the best was like he just didn't even fight it. Like usually some guy would be like, oh, he just like. Okay, it's fair enough. It's That's down. fair enough. It's fine. Uh, Leto P chimes in. You guys hit on the Andrew Luck injury history last week or a couple weeks ago. As an offensive lineman, what is the fallout from the locker room and mentally when a quarterback gets hurt from a guy that you were responsible for? Like when Dwayne Brown gave up the uh, Aaron Rodgers Achilles sack, for instance. Like, do you guys ever feel bad if you blow you blow a block or something? I mean, it's not as and, and you'll probably beat yourself up more individually than anything else. Um, I don't know if I've ever, I don't think I was ever part of a hit that got someone hurt like personally, but you know, you'll never you'll never blame a guy for missing a block and getting a guy hurt, right? That's part of the game. Guys miss blocks all the time. Guys miss reads all the time. Guys yeah. miss balls, whatever it is. It's, it's part of the game. Is it unfortunate? Absolutely. But, like, nothing would be worse than coming in the locker room and being like, you ruined our season, you jackass, right? Like, it just it doesn't work like that. No, it never, it never really happens like that. And don't get me wrong. When you get the quarterback hit, there's a lot of times you feel really, really Horrible. bad horrible especially because at times they make they make crazy sounds when they get hit like especially when they don't see it coming dude they make that dude uh, dude they make a throttling noise and you're like i'm really sorry buddy like Like, you're you're you're, the death rattle of their lungs were just like the the best quarterbacks will sit there and be like yo it's my bad and you're like no it's (laughs) not it's not they're like i should have got rid of it you're like "Ah, it's my like that's almost hurts you even worse when you're like dude it was my fault. All right, as you're, as you're peeling it. them off. Yeah, you're the literally picking him up, dude. I'm I so sorry. Chalk. There was one it. time. There was one time we were playing the Giants, and it was actually against Linval when he played for the Giants, and it was Linval, and it was Justin Tuck, and they ran a twist, and it was very, very late. I mean, they must have fallen into it really late to the point that me and AD didn't even think it was a twist, and they ended up picking AD, and I ended up trying to take two, and they ended up like grabbing Alex. And I remember holding him up with them. And I was like, if he's going down, I'll get tackled with him. And they started, like, sacking me. And I was like, dude, this sucks. Like, they're all hitting you from every angle. And they're trying to pull you down. And the whole time, you're just, like, holding your quarterback. Like, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Somebody blow the whistle. Oh, my God. Like, you're just like, let it. But, dude, it's nobody ever turns around and goes, that's your fault. Like, nobody ever says, like, you're responsible for this. Like, you would have to really blow it horribly wrong. Like, we've seen some things. Jay and I have even here where guys missed a block and it was like the quarterback got tattooed and people were just like, Hey, you got to be smarter than that. Like you can't let this stupid shit affect us for the rest of the season. Cause you're right. One of those hits is going to eventually end up affecting your team forever. And you're like, you're right. We only have a limited window with this guy. We can't get the, but nobody's ever like you cost us the season. Like that's not really feasible. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. The worst part is the O line coach in the in the O line room when you get your quarterback tattooed when he doesn't say anything, but he just rewinds it, plays it, rewinds it, plays it, <laughs> and no one's saying anything in the room. Zero right? words are being spoken, <laughs> and you're just watching it over and over again. Like, oh god, 
<laughs> and if it's you, it's it's so. And even if it's not you, it's so awkward because like you don't want to look at your buddy, right? Like because you know like the hammer's coming, and after about like the eighth time, you just what the and you're like oh there it comes here it goes or, like, like it's like when the baby's crying and like <gasps> like it's just a big inhale like you know it's coming but if he just moves on if you're a young player like if you're a young player and you're in training camp and like you're trying to make the team and you're watching that then like it's a preseason game and all of a sudden he just moves on you're right? like he doesn't say oh anything. it's bad that's when you're just like oh god dead man walking like yeah. that dude's dead. And then after the meeting, they're like, Is that, he didn't say anything. It's like, doesn't even care enough. It's not know. good, dude. Good. It's not, not good. good. He, like the young guy's just like, Whoa. I was worried he was going to scream. It's like, no, buddy, you'd much rather him want. You want the screaming. You you want the screaming. The silence you, he's the He doesn't dad. want to coach you. Yeah, right, he doesn't that. want That's to waste his is. time with you. He said that enough about to you, and he's not going to say it again. The worst, in my opinion, was when they would keep rewinding, and then they'd be like, you tell me. Yeah. <laughs> what do we do wrong here? And you'd be like, oh. Fuck, there's a multitude of things I did wrong. <laughs> yeah. Which one am I hitting home? And you'd be like, first, my stance is shit. He'd be like, okay. He understands I'm going to grill the fuck out of him right now. Like he, He's going to get it. And you're like, I, I, I'm oozing off the ball. I'm not throwing my hands. I'm being a pussy. Like You're just throwing everything out there. And he's like, yep, yep. Did you, did yep. you guys know that that happens in media too? That really? in, in my career, and this happens in, in radio especially, probably happens in TV, that there are radio program directors that will bring hosts in their talent in yeah. once a week or once even like some do it once a day and they will play back chunks of your show and coach you like like for you guys let's go back and watch the film here yeah i in my in my life and career doing this an idiot on a microphone i've had program directors they bring you in they play like 5 minutes of a clip and they say i want you to listen to this tell me what you hear Tell tell that. me what you think you could have done what? better here, dude. It's, it's a, we should do that dude. for this show actually. Yeah, Alex, who's Sir, be, who's Sirius used to do that. The, uh, Sirius used to do that. Sirius XM used to do it. Sirius XM used to do it, and they would call. They would call us in, and they would be like, "Okay, this is what we think," and they would go over it with you, and you'd be oh, like, "So uncomfortable. This is dude. awkward." Yeah. <laughs> You'd be like, this so is so they would give you feed, like feedback yeah. on your segments and stuff. Yeah, and they'd be like, I want to, we want to meet again later in a couple months, and we're gonna sit down and talk again about what you're doing and stuff like that. And you'd be like, Yeah, no, not at all, <laughs> yeah. like, Hard not pass. at all. What, like, did they did they ever like give you any const- like actual constructive valuable feedback, or was it just trying to justify their existence as a middle manager? <laughs> it was just trying to justify because back then, dude, this it was. Uh, Amber Theo Harris and I, we would do the pregame show, so we would talk about all the games for the day, and it was really just like, Booney, what do you think? And so it was like, this is what I think, and they're going to win or they're going to lose, and this is why, and this is the week, and blah, blah, blah. It was literally like, guys, I don't know how you could screw this up. What do you mean? Like, <laughs> They were like, no, no, we love it. It's great. The energy's great. Like, blah, blah. But like, let's play this clip back, and let me yeah. know what you think you And hear. you would listen to it, and they'd be like, what do you think? And you'd be like, I think I took a long pause because I wasn't sure what I was thinking, and yeah. I had to <laughs> think about it for a second, and they were like... <laughs> Oh, okay, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, no, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. It's no. like, no, oh, he, I wouldn't handle that well. No, I, dude, I, it was. I wouldn't handle that well at all. It was a lot, man. I didn't. I didn't really. To be honest, like, our meeting is program director meeting is us just texting all week. Like, <laughs> can't believe you said that. You're an idiot. <laughs> You're gonna owe me a steak and a beer at the end of this. My favorite is finding the most like defamatory comment and sending it and be like, ah, oh, someone, yes. It's the <laughs> best, dude. People think that we must get really hurt by it, but when you oh. send them through, I die laughing because I'm like. Okay. Anytime, listen. If you want to get my attention, just make fun of Alex's skinny legs because those are just those. Wow. Just get, those just get pinned right to the top, right to the top. Wow. Of the I'll bust throw myself for that. Um, wow. I th- listen I still here, think- pickleball shoulder. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sensitive. <laughs> Sensitive. I still think the Deflection. best one is when when you guys poked the Kirk Cousins hornet's nest like a month oh, ago. God. Oh, we'll Dude, poke it again. I have never experienced <laughs> anything like that in my Dude, life. I have. Booney, Phil, Booney, you and I have. You and I have. <laughs> last but, but year. But Booney took a shot. Booney took a shot at. We all did. But like Booney was talking about. He doesn't work on Tuesdays and all the rooms that I've been in Tuesdays, Tuesdays. And the number of people that came <laughs> back and said. Well, Boone didn't work on Sundays, didn't show up on Sundays. <laughs> yeah, I think you guys are so creative. Keep them coming. I am not a women's basketball coach. I do not get that. Oh, man. Uh, David Henneman chimes in here and says, what do you guys look for in college film study that translates to the NFL with young interior offensive linemen? This is a very specific question. 
Interior. What translates? Mm. What doesn't translate? <sighs> Guards and, and centers. If a, if a, if the number one thing I look for is hand quickness in the pass game. Mm. Yep, like if strike. you have if you have a guard or a center that is very quick with their hands in college and strikes, that's the number one thing that's going to need to go to the next level, which is how quickly the interior guys are on you in the next level, right? Like so many guys in college don't use their hands at any that the guard position, the center, like they're just kind of like bodying guys or mirroring guys up and then grabbing and holding on. But you have to strike at the next level or you're dead. I mean, you're done for before you're dead on arrival. So if I identify a guy that's like, hey, man, this dude actually throws his hands. Like, he actually strikes and he throws them out there and he's not afraid to get them knocked down because he's actually giving a shit about it. That's my number one thing I look for in interior guys. I agree. That's one of the things that we were looking at yesterday and one of the, one of the guys we were watching and I was like, wow, he's got a nice strike. Like, it's one of those things where – it looks different to Jay and I because everybody in college is so passive at times and they're just all trying to grab each other and hold on for dear life. And you're like, that's not how this works. And even in the gym, when we talk to guys, like we have a day dedicated just to striking because it's such a skill that there's so many times that guys in the moment will be like, well, I don't know what happened. And I just grabbed him. And it's like, you can't do that. You have to strike him. You have to stop his charge. You have to do this. So when we start watching somebody, it's the first thing that stands out because you're standing up D lineman. You're literally like, you strike them and they stand straight up and we're like, yep, call them. Let's see what's up. Let's see what this dude wants to do because he's different. He's willing to attack somebody. He's willing to come out here and he control the rep. That's what we call it in the gym. Like if you don't control the rep, you're just hanging on for dear life and yeah. you're like, just die this slow death. But if you're controlling the rep, you shoot your hands, they might slap them and you just reposition. And all of a sudden you're back to striking again. Like it's just keeping people away and not being afraid to use your strength, use your length. Like that's the one thing we look for in the core guys. Two, how fast are they coming off the ball? A lot of the guys in the core kind of ooze off the ball. They kind of just... And you're like, all right, he's just another big dude. But then there's guys that move, and you're like, holy shit. This guy knows how to move his feet. He knows how to strike. We should call him. He looks like he's going to be ready for the next level. It To us, it just kind of looks like they're a step above. They're not, they're not just out there playing to play. They're out there controlling guys, running the game, like being like, no, I'm going to stand you up and throw my paymakers, headbutt you a little bit. Like, We like the aggression. That's what the yeah. NFL is looking for. They're not looking for guys that are like, oh, sure, I think I can do that. They're looking for guys who are like, yeah, I can do that, and I'll do it with a smile on my face and headbutt the shit out of this dude. Like That's come out here and show and the, us. And the number one like red flag for me is guys that position block on the inside. And what I mean by position block is if you're in a run game, right, and you're just like, let me just shield him from where the hole is and turn my ass in the hole and just like mirror him instead of trying to road hog and go and drive dudes off the ball, hit linebackers and move them, not just stalemate them. Like, that doesn't work at the next level either. You try and stalemate a guy at the next level, you're getting steamrolled backwards, right? So anyone that's just trying to like position block or be a finesse blocker in the interior in college, not working, dude. I need, I need a road grader. I need a dude that's not afraid to get dirty and get after it. Mm-hmm. That was a lot of just great football jargon right there. It's fine. It's our life. Want to commend you? Yeah, we guys, break it man. down all the time. It's, I mean, it's great stuff. That's right a, there. that's what gives us our edge when we're watching tape and finding guys that maybe are under the radar a little bit, but you see the tools and you can see it, and eventually the NFL catches up to it. But it's just part of what we do. You guys let me be a fly on the wall. Like when we were first putting this podcast together, I think it was last May, and you let me just kind of sit in there while you guys mm -hmm. did film review. Can I do that again? Can Absolutely. I just sit there oh, yeah. and... I mean, it's a Boone and I were on Zoom for two hours yesterday watching tape. Just with the guys? With the, no, just, you know, no, just us. Just you guys. They were trying the recruit. to recruit. Recruiting season, right? You're already back into recruiting guys for next year. Yeah. It's wild. We should, yeah, we should do a dive into like that whole, to whatever extent you guys are comfortable talking about, just the process of building your companies, and we oh, should do an sure. episode on that sometime. We don't get approval kind of dies down here. some guys. Yeah, we'll, we'll ask some film. guys. We'll ask some guys, but I bet you we could do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Be kind of fun. Do like a, like a reality show episode. And we'll show you why we recruited who we recruited. Yeah, that'd be great. For sure. Yeah. So, all right, that's a wrap here on Dumb Football Questions, O-Line Committee. Don't forget about your O-Line Committee merch at olinecommittee.com. You can follow us on any of the social media platforms and uh, click that like button and the subscribe button on the O-Line Committee YouTube channel.